okay so the displacement of a body executing shm is given by this thing the first time from a, uh, from t equals to 0 when the velocity is maximum cool so just differentiating this to get velocity equal to 2 pi a cosine so cosine of 2 pi t plus pi by 3 and since we want this to be maximum well i guess what they mean is that they want the magnitude to be maximum because well yeah generally they ask about these things only so um for that you should have this thing 2 pi t plus pi by 3 this being equal to um some integral multiple of pi so you just want 2 pi t plus pi by 3 equal to n pi so 2t plus 1 by 3 equal to n t equal to n by 2 minus 1 by 6 so the smallest n would be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 6 which is 1 by 3 that would be 0 0.33 something and the next smallest would be 1 minus 1 by 6 which is 5 by 6 which is 0 0.833 yeah uh, so when n will be 1 this will be just pi so cosine of pi that would be negative 1 so in this case um, the velocity would actually be the minimum thing but uh, still its magnitude is maximum so yeah I guess that's what they mean when they say the first time from user when the velocity is maximum something like that because they didn't say like the velocity uh, taking one direction as positive or something like that so I guess we just have to submit this as the answer and not this and yeah it's not in the options so 0 0.333 there we go next the maximum acceleration of particle in shm is made two times keeping the maximum speed to be constant it is possible when hmm. okay so just use um i guess conservation of energy yeah so they gave us ratio of maximum speed and um, the ratio of maximum accelerations i guess we can use conservation of energy to get this done because we can write k in terms of acceleration in that case yeah so that looks correct okay cool so half mv squared equal to half kx squared and instead of k i will write mk where this k is the one from a equals to minus kx that equation so kx squared cool so that just gives v squared equal to kx squared okay so taking the ratio we will get v dash oops, v dash squared upon v squared and this is the the maximum v and this is the maximum displacement actually i should say capital a squared so k into a dash squared upon k into a so we si still we since no sorry uh, uh we still do not know what um these a dash and a are in the ratio of and also there should be k1 k2 because they didn't say that this is going to be constant hey uh, but we know one thing you know like k1 a oops I should say k dash and k in that case so k dash k dash a dash times a dash upon k a times a now this ratio well that's just yeah this is the fourth no not the fourth acceleration yeah that looks correct it's the acceleration and we know that it should be two times right this thing is two times of that so two a dash upon a and the velocities are the same so one let's get a dash equal to a by two so the amplitude the new amplitude is half the original one and since you have the accelerations to be seen just have well what are they asking they are asking about amplitude and the angular frequency so yeah we just find the frequency so we need to find k dash for that so k dash a dash upon k a equals to 2 correct so that gives k dash upon k equal well, we know what this thing is it's just 1 by 2 right so it's 1 by 2 so this should be 4 so i just write 4k over there taking the square root we know k dash is just omega squared so omega dash equal to 2 omega so t dash equal to um half t so the time period is halved in fact they don't even want a time period so just angular frequency which is doubled and the amplitude is halved so amplitude is okay frequency is doubled yeah amplitude is half correct next the potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator of mass 2 kg about its mean position is 4 joule if its total energy is 9 joules and its amplitude is 10 power minus 2 meter uh, its time period would be so they have defined the potential energy at the mean position to be 5 joules and 
if we were to be defining it as zero, then the total energy would be half kx squared. Instead of k, I should just write mk squared. mkx squared, yeah. Well, yeah, looks correct. In fact, no, let it be. Just write it as kx squared. So this k is the one from the fourth constant equation. Okay, and plus the potential energy defined at the mean position, so five joules. This would now be the total energy. So this is supposed to be nine joules, which means kx squared equal to eight joules. They gave us what x is. So k times 10 power minus two squared equal to eight joules. So k is just eight to 10 power four. Well, this is meters. So whatever the SI units is. So that essentially gives F equal to 8 into 10 power, actually it should be minus, but we get it. 8 into 10 power 4 into X, correct? Uh, and what's the mass? The mass is 2 kg, so that would be acceleration equal to 4 into 10 power 4 into X. So that means this thing is our K from, um, in fact, not even K. Let's just say it's omega squared because we already used k in this case. So omega squared is 4 to 10 power 4. So omega is 2 into 10 power 2. Now we know what the angular frequency is. We just need to find the time period. Time period is 2 pi upon omega, which is pi upon 10 squared, which is 100. So that's the time period. And it is going to be in SI units, which is seconds. So pi by 100 seconds. Next. A plank with a small block on the top of it is undergoing SHM vertical SHM so I guess they mean something like this that at one extreme position it's like really down and then on another extreme position it's up and stuff like that okay its period is two seconds okay cool so they gave us the time period the minimum amplitude at which the block will separate from the plank is hmm. fine so yeah, well, what we need to find is the acceleration which this particle must be going uh, at the topmost point, right? And from there, we can write some equations. So let's find that acceleration. What do we know that x is the amplitude sine? Well, did they give us amplitude? No, they didn't. Uh, anyway, let's do it. So sine of omega t. Well, omega in this case is, uh, yeah, so 2 pi upon two seconds which is pi so pi into t in si units correct at t equals to zero let's just say it's at the equilibrium position cool so from there we just get x dash equal to well they yeah they didn't give us the amplitude or anything fine so it should just be pi a cosine pi t x dash well that basically means v uh, from there, acceleration is minus pi squared a into, oh, so actually we want to find the amplitude. Yeah, so minus pi squared a sine of pi t. And this acceleration should be equal to um, the normal force upon the mass. So this acceleration is going to be upwards because we are defining this x to be the upward quantity. Yeah, so n upon m minus a downward one which is mg so it's gonna be g so you just get n upon m equal to g minus pi squared a sine of pi t cool so since the normal force must always be positive this is bigger than or equal to zero and this should be for all values of t which means it's also for the uh, for t equals to one by two well, t equals to 1 by 2 will give g minus pi squared a is bigger than or equal to 0. In fact, pi by 2, actually, that gives the maximum value of this function. That's nice. So, you should have g is bigger than or, wait a second. Well, yeah, uh, pi squared a for this to function correctly. So, if, the, if this condition is met, this will be a periodic SHM as we know it. But if it is, is not met, well, it will go down and then it will bounce up, which is not what we want. So that gives a is less than or equal to g upon pi square. So the limiting condition would be a equal to g upon pi square. So that should be our amplitude. So that's nice. Well, g is just 10 in this case, right? Everything in numeric values. So it's going to be 10 upon pi square. Next question. Time period of a particle 
executing SHM is 8 seconds. Mm -hmm. After, okay, at t equals to 0, it is at the mean position. The ratio of the distance covered by the particle in the first, okay, okay, I get it. So, just write the thing x equal to a sine of so at t equals to 0 it's in the mean position so it's going to be omega t time period is 8 seconds so it's going to be 2 pi upon 8 seconds into t okay so at t equals to 1 we just get a sine of well pi by 4 which is like a by square root 2 at t equals to 2 we get pi by 2 so that would be a so um this is like this complete thing would be a and this thing would be a by square root 2 i believe so this is uh at t equals to 1 this is at t equals to 2 so from 1 to 2 which is the second second <laughs> second second yeah so in that time it covered this distance which is a into 1 minus 1 upon square root 2 so we want the ratio of the uh, distance in the first second to the second second <laughs> So it should be a by square root 2 upon a into 1 minus 1 upon square root 2 which is 1 upon square root 2 minus 1 correct so rationalizing this thing which should just get square root 2 plus 1 and that's nice next question two particles are in shm in a straight line about same equilibrium position amplitude a and time t period of uh okay of four particles equal time t equals to zero one particle all right i guess this one has to do a, a lot with phase and stuff so it's better to actually draw it like this instead so uh, that linear representation is good for um the forces and other kinds of stuff but for this thing where we know almost nothing well okay whatever let's just try to do it with the normal thing let's see what we get two particles are in shm the straight line about the same blah 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 what are they saying time t equals to zero one particle is at displacement y equals to a and other at y2 equals to minus a by 2 okay this is the equilibrium position this would be the first particle this is the second particle and they are approaching towards each other oh so this is moving something like this this is not moving it's at v equals to zero state after what time uh, they cross each other each other okay so let's let's try to write the equation so say this particle is one this is two this is a by two which is minus a by two so x equal to amplitude sine of so at t equals to zero it should be minus 30 degrees correct well yeah so minus pi by 6 plus uh yeah that should be pi minus pi by 6 correct plus um 2 and pi d well wait a second it can be minus pi by 6 or it can also be okay wait a second your speed which is proportional to cosine well that should be positive in this case so cosine of minus pi by 6 well yeah that is positive so this is gonna work nice so that's x actually why am i putting 2 and pi over there it should be uh, 2 pi upon capital t into small t nice so at t equals to 0 sine of minus pi by 6 this is giving minus a by 2 as the position and the velocity that will be positive because cosine of five, minus pi by 6 cool and this is for 1 x2 is a sine of pi by 2 yeah that that's almost correct so 2 pi by capital t small t yep so what are they asking at what time uh, they cross each other so we want uh, well they cross okay fine so just these quantities also. not necessarily these quantities because it can be possible that uh, their velocities are different and something like that so yeah what what we care about is minus pi by 6 plus 2 pi by t capital t well one of the family of solutions will okay that doesn't give any solution because these will just cancel away and then you got an equation which is not true uh, the other one the other one will be pi minus pi by 2 plus 2 pi t 
by phi capital T small d plus 2 n pi so I'm just gonna leave it like that uh, I won't be adding that 2 n pi yet so this is minus 1 by 6 plus 2 small t by capital T equal to 1 minus 1 by 2 minus 2 small t upon capital T so just get 4 small t by capital T equal to this is 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 which is like just got 3 by 6 I guess it's gonna be 4 by 6 hmm. well looks correct yeah minus 5 by 6 it's gonna work so uh, actually it should be like plus 2 and pi but whatever we just want the smallest smallest uh, small t so it is gonna be small t equal to well 4 cancels so just get capital T by 6 nice so d is the answer next question two particles execute shm of same amplitude of 20 centimeter with the same period along the same line what is same equilibrium position just like the previous question okay the maximum distance between the two is 20 centimeter they are faced right right so the maximum distance is like basically x1 minus x2 the mod of that the maximum of this function correct uh, so when will this be maximum when you got dx1 upon dt maximum or minimum well yeah minus dx2 actually I should say for this when will this be maximum or minimum because both give uh, both give maximum distance condition so minus x2 upon dt equals to 0 right just take a derivative and equate to 0 that's the condition for minimum or maximum so yeah this should just be amplitude omega omega is same amplitude is same for both of them so like sine no sorry not sine cosine omega t plus say some angle minus same stuff just different angle this should be equal to zero well this cancels so now it's easy so you just get omega t plus alpha one equal to omega t okay that equation won't work so the other equation which we can use is minus omega t minus alpha 2 plus 2 and pi so that just gives omega t plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 upon 2 equals well, what do we their phase difference right uh, yeah cosines which is getting okay that is weird wait did they just give us yeah so uh once we find t we can in fact find what x1 minus x2 is so they didn't they don't want us to find um what this quantity should be for yeah whatever we just want to find t and substitute it into x1 minus x2 cool so this is supposed to be n pi nice yeah substitute in terms of okay so t should be why is this n pi though okay whatever so t is just n pi minus alpha 1 by 2 minus alpha 2 by 2 so substitute it over there so x1 minus x2 that becomes um amplitude sine of n pi minus alpha okay so that crazy stuff plus alpha so that should be plus alpha 1 by 2 minus alpha 2 by 2 okay cool and minus a sine of n pi that's alpha 2 by 2 and that's alpha 1 by 2 and this should be 20 centimeter well and it is also the same thing so just say a so this cancels just get 1 now what well use that formula so 2 sine of the difference well the difference yeah it's it's just alpha 1 by 2 that's alpha 2 by 2 um times cosine the sum so n pi plus well that cancels so just it's just n pi equals to 1 cosine of n pi it can be plus or minus 1 so the thing is like this quantity should also be plus or minus 1 wait no it's not plus or minus plus or minus 1 by 2 because you also got, got this 2 over there so just have just call this difference difference upon 2 equal to pi by 6 i believe plus minus well yeah but the difference can be whatever you want it can be plus d minus d so difference is just pi by 3 huh cool so pi by 3 is the answer next question 
two particles p and q describe simple harmonic motion of same period same amplitude along the same lines about the same equilibrium position once again the same stuff when p and q are on opposite sides of o what am i doing o so opposite sides but where oh so they just gave opposite sides oh at the same distance but not at any special point huh fine so just some distance you know what yeah this time maybe we should be using this thing because this is looking like a big question there's quite a lot going on so to analyze it better we can draw this circle and yeah let's start this is our line where the dihsm is going on so first of all what's happening is that they are the okay they are at opposite positions so if this guy is over here it would be right so basically there are projections on this line that represent the sign of whatever this angle is you get it right that represents the position sine represents position cosine represents the velocity i mean not exactly the velocity it's proportional to the velocity so yeah so they are at the same position so it could be like this or it could be like this hmm. okay and wh what about their velocities same speed in the same direction yeah that's correct and they are at the same distance from o with this point would be o huh. and this velocity is 1.2 okay fine so it's, so it's 1.2 1.2 we don't yet know what the distance is when the displacements are the same okay so now the displacements are the same say something over here right in fact it it can also be over here uh not that one this one because we have the same speed of 1.6 meter per second in, in opposite directions wait what oh so if this is over here this yeah that's correct the maximum velocity in meter per second of either huh that's going to be a weird question so yeah let's try uh one thing which is special about this representation is that the phase difference well that's clearly indicated by whatever this angle is the angle between these two right so that's nice so hmm. it can be like this which one of these should we choose in fact since um, yeah this looks symmetric so we can choose any pair and it will still work correct i mean the equations will differ because we are fixing a particular coordinate system but all in all it's almost the same stuff so just erase some of them which we don't want to consider okay cool oh uh, that we had to consider that that was what we wanted so we want this one we also want this one i guess uh, this is not necessary okay so this is having 1.6 so i guess what should be happening is since the phase difference is the same and we can only see them moving along this circle in a particular manner right so one is moving and the other one is following with the same speed um what can we see is that this is one this is two then this will be one and this will be two hmm. let's draw this thing let's see what their phase difference will look like okay so this angle and we also got this okay this is getting very ugly hmm hey but how how is that even no that's not correct or is it well we don't know how much we move we do know this line is horizontal you know this line is vertical and stuff but why should this angle be equal to that angle for any reason no it's not correct so i just got like this complete thing is 2x this um complete thing is 2x and so this thing is y 
do we can we find anything about this why uh, got me something which we can use oh come on there has to be something is this like a cyclic quadrilateral like, okay wait a second that's not gonna make sense though sure but no 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 that's not correct you got this 2x subtended like that hmm oh that could be a thing ah why is this not working one thing you know is like okay well let's just see this is having 1.6 and stuff okay what's this angle well this complete angle that that's 2x so this should be just up no wait that would be for this thing what's for this thing though ah god so this is this is one thing and then just by moving it a little like this that's another 2x and this is y okay yeah it's not working oh god mm. oh oh well that's nice that's nice right i can use that reasoning so yeah this might not be 180 degree but what we know for sure is that since uh, they said that these distances are equal in magnitude we can say that this is x well this is this is also x okay if this complete thing is also x obviously so this um thing should be x minus y and this should also be x minus y hey what that basically means is that this angle is actually 180 degree right so 2x minus 3y i suppose no minus y just minus y equals to pi by 2 hmm, nice so that gives y equals to 2x minus pi by 2 that's nice well now what just substitute it over here so this is 2x minus pi by 2 okay so this should be that minus that which is pi by 2 minus 2x plus x which is pi by 2 minus oh oh that is awesome so yeah this was never 180 degrees because it's got something more than just pi by 2 because this angle is pi by 2 this is pi by 2 minus x as well and this is x so this angle is also pi by 2 which means yeah it was never 180 degree just looks like that okay so what do we need to find is there any other condition yeah we know the speeds maybe we can find sure we can uh, use the ratio to get something done so i just remove this it's 1.6 over here it's 1.2 over there so like the cosine theta term represents um speed proportionally so this distance would be proportional to 1 point 1.2 this distance would be proportional to 1.6 right so this distance huh well that that's more like 3 to 4 ratio so what's what's the angle for this triangle well it's pi by 2 minus x plus 2 yeah so in short it is x so we can just take cosine x is proportional to um 1.2 and what about this guy this is pi by 20 okay so that's gonna be sine x in that case right cosine of pi, minus, pi by 2 minus x that's proportional to 1.6 so yay just divide this so it's gonna be tan x equals to 1.6 upon 1.2 which is 4 by 3 so now we know what um, this angle is cool now we need to find something hey since we know what this angle is we know what x is we also know um, the velocity we can essentially find out everything yeah, so the velocity is also going to be something like in SHM, but it's going to have velocity equal to velocity maximum into cosine of whatever is the phase angle. In this case, the phase angle uh, at this point is x, correct? Yeah, and velocity is 1.2. Okay, cool. So we just get V max equal to 1.2 upon cosine x, okay. 
what's cosine x well tan x is 4 by 3 x this will be 5 so cosine x is just 3 by 5 so it's like 1 by 2 1.2 upon 3 by 5 which is 6 upon 3, which is 2 that's it that's the maximum velocity that's what they wanted us to find yeah that was nice okay next question a particle performs SHM with a period T and amplitude A. The mean velocity of the particle, okay, with period T amplitude A, fine. The mean velocity of the particle over the time interval. So they want the mean velocity, huh? During which it travels distance A by 2 from the extreme position. Oh, all right. Is. Oh, uh, now we need to find everything. So, yeah, well, maybe we can do this, but it's gonna get tough. We have to... Okay, let's just do this. V squared is kx. It, well, this k is um, the one from the force constant. No, uh, the one from the acceleration equals to minus kx. Thing. So, kx squared. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And it's going from... Um, velocity equals to zero to something to x equals to the amplitude to something so we just get v squared equal to kx squared minus k squared okay so in this case amplitude is small a small a squared uh, they gave us a time period so now we know what t is uh, sorry now we know what k is uh, but we will substitute that later so x squared minus k squared cool now we need to find the mean velocity which is the complete distance upon the wait a second so we just need to find a time taken right huh well that was not that bad why are we even doing this we, we don't need to integrate then we just need to find the total time so x equal to amplitude sine of well okay what even is that we don't know the phase angle well let's just say that at t equals to zero it's at the extreme position so then this would be um sine of pi by 2 plus omega t yeah so at t equals to 0 is that it's a text in position and we want it to cover distance a by 2 so it's going to be from 0 to well no not from 0 from amplitude to amplitude by 2 actually small a in this case small a by 2 and this is gonna go from 0 to small t by 2 so you just get a sine of pi by 2 plus omega t by 2 oops omega t squared no equal to so we're just putting that we just get minus a by 2 this cancels cancels just get minus 1 by 2 pi by 2 plus omega t by 2 well that's essentially just cosine of omega t by 2 correct and this would be minus 1 by 2 this is at pi by 3 something like that so omega t by 2 equals to minus pi by 3 plus 2n pi or um well i guess pi by 3 doesn't give a wait what am i doing no 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 it's not it's not at pi uh, minus pi by 3 uh it's like 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 plus 2n pi or this can also be written as minus 2 pi by 3 plus 2 and pi. Okay. So just get omega t. Well, what is omega? Omega is just 2 pi upon capital T. In this case, it will be pi upon capital T over here. What's the time period? Well, it's just capital T. Nothing else. Okay. So we want the mean. So in, in, sh in short, we want the smallest small t. Correct. So here the smallest small t would just be 2 pi by 3. Here it will be 2 pi minus 2 pi by 3, which is 1 minus 1 by 3 is 2 pi by 3, 4 pi by 3. So no, not this one. This is what we want. So it's gonna get t equals to 2 capital T upon 3. Nice. So what the distance is covered? A by 2. What's the time? Well, it's 2 capital. Did we do it correctly though? Well, yeah, we did it correctly. So, it's going to be a by 2 upon 2t two by 3, which, huh. 
wait what you want to make something is wrong i can see this it is distance covered is a by two for sure it should be having like four and stuff over there which is not there right hmm. so then what what went wrong so it takes two t by three time well in t by two you can just complete one oscillation and it's just covering a by two no 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 no, no. something's wrong something's wrong oh yeah no <laughs> wait 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 sign of pi by two plus oh my god t come on yeah at pi by two it's a and when it this progress this goes on it's going from a to ah right right there's where the mistake so it's gonna be zero over there so it should, it should be minus one in that case yeah so this will be positive d by two ah such mistakes really kill everything okay so there we go it's gonna be positive plus d by sorry positive one by two so this should be pi by three um plus two and pi or minus pi by three plus two and pi. well that gives the bigger one it gives the smaller solution so pi by three which means t equal to capital t by three so which is gonna be a by two upon capital t by three which is three by two small a by t nice where is it <laughs> it's, it's still not in the options why from the extreme position the mean velocity why is this not in the options ah uh, so you should be having like 2t by 3 in that case so you should be like 2 pi by 3 wait that doesn't make sense though sign of pi by 2 plus okay, that's minus 1 by 2 it's t by 2 oh no no wait no that's not correct what's going wrong it should be mine It's got v squared equal to kx squared. Now then that's not what we need. This thing, right? At pi by two, this would be at the maximum position. That looks correct. It's gonna go for the e by two position after that, starting from a. Just get minus e by two, I believe. Yep. And this is equal to sine of pi by two. <sighs> what is going wrong? Sin of pi by 2 plus well is that cosine yeah sure just cosine of omega t point 2 what's going wrong Something is definitely wrong but what and this should be equal to 1 by 2 so it will pi by 3 and it's gonna be 2 pi by t upon 2 which is uh, pi by t sure so minus 1 by 2 yeah i mean what else can it be it's got to be like that it just gives pi by 3 okay so small d equals to capital t by 3 that's when it reaches it we want the mean velocity of the particle for this time interval and this should be 3 by 2 but, but that's not what is given in the options all the options give some other result 3 by 2 a by t well 3 by t 2 a by t a by 2 t just y that 3 goes Come on, it should be like that, right? So at t by 3. Okay, let's do it with the other method. This thing. V squared equals to all, all that stuff. So. Well, no, let me be. Don't do it like that. 
so what we mean is that at pi by 2 it will be over there and the pi by 2 plus whenever this is um so you want it to be pi by 3 in that case right yeah is there even a smaller solution no it, it, it is the maximum that we can get so at pi by 2 plus pi by 3 where will the put where will the position be? It's gonna be sine of pi by 2 plus pi by 3 which is Yeah, well that is cosine of pi by 3 Which is For sure it's it's just 1 by 2 So it just goes to a by 2 in that case Okay, whatever That's it. Just move on so this is not giving us correct solutions. Next, a body performs simple harmonic oscillation along the straight line A B C D E, with C as the midpoint of A E. Okay, its kinetic energy is at B and D are each one fourth of its maximum value. Simple harmonic oscillations along the straight line A B C D E, C as the midpoint. Mm -hmm. Its kinetic energy is. B and D each one fourth of its maximum value. Fine. If A E equals to two R, the distance between B and D is so A equals to two R, A C equals to capital R. Just do this. Uh, between B and D, that's what they ask, right? So let's do it. What do we know? Um, v squared equals to K X squared minus ka squared correct yeah so kinetic energy is proportional to x squared minus a squared looks correct and what do we have it's kinetic energy at b and d are each one fourth of its maximum value No, so, something yes yeah, it should be this thing k capital a squared minus k small x squared right a squared minus x squared in this case a is more like r okay so kinetic energy at b and d that's one fourth of its maximum value so one fourth equals to r squared minus x squared upon the maximum value is when uh you just got r squared right Sorry, uh, you just got x equals to 0. Yeah, r squared. Cool. So, that just gives x upon r squared. Actually, 1 minus that. So, 1 minus that equals to 1 by 4. x upon r squared is 3 by 4. x equal to square root of 3 by 2 r. So, that's what this distance is. So, it should be 2 times of that, which is square root of 3 r as our answer. So, there we go. Next question. A graph of the square of velocity against the square of the acceleration of a given simple harmonic motion is oh, okay square of the velocity means square of acceleration well acceleration proportional to x um, and what do we know v squared is linearly related to x squared yeah it's got to be like an ellipse most likely right because v is a omega cosine of the angle um acceleration is a omega squared cosine of the angle sorry sine of the angle so just get v squared upon a squared omega squared yeah it should be something like an ellipse right a squared uh, with the power 4, well, that's 1. Square of velocity against the square of the acceleration given. Harmonic motion. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> it's not any this. So, we are not graphing V and A. We are graphing V squared and A squared. So, we just get V squared. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a line. So, should we see? Oh, wait. There's also another line over there. This line. So, just get V squared equals to minus A squared upon all that which means uh, the slope is negative so it should be d 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ स्मॉल मास एग्जीक्यूट्स लीनियर एस एच एम अबाउट ओ विथ एम्पलीट्यूड ए एंड पीरियड टी इट्स डिस्प्लेसमेंट फ्राम ओ एट टाइम टी बाई एट आफ्टर पासिंग थ्रू सो डेज अ पीरियड टी इट्स डिस्प्लेसमेंट फ्राम ओ आफ्टर पासिंग थ्रू ओ इज so it's going to be t by 8 which means the angle which we will be having is 2 pi into small t upon t which is um, in this case is just 1 by 8 it's going to be pi by 4 huh so it's going to be sine of pi by 4 which is 1 by square root 2 times a that's the displacement <laughs> yeah, that was easy yeah i mean too easy is there some other stuff going on in the sh Well, no. That is it, really. After passing through O, so initially at t equals to zero, just got zero as the the point. So, yeah. So just e by square root two. Next question. A particle executes S H M on a straight line path. The amplitude of the oscillation is two centimeter. Okay. When the displacement of the particle from mean position is one centimeter. The numerical value of magnitude of acceleration is equal to numerical what? Wait, wait. Particle acceleration on a straight line path. Amplitude is two centimeters. When the displacement of the particle from mean position is one centimeter, the numerical value of okay, so when x equal to one centimeter, the numerical value of the magnitude. Okay. Of acceleration is equal to the numerical value of the magnitude of the velocity. Wow. So in what units? Let's just see the numerical value. But in what units though? Ah. Well, I mean like the length unit is same, so it, it should just be basically, yeah. Value of the magnitude of acceleration equal to the numerical value. So we just got v equal to a, more like magnitude is equal to that. So x equals to one centimeter, amplitude is two centimeter. That gives uh, it should be the angle which gives one by two, so it's going to be pi by six. So cosine of pi by six, well, just a omega cosine of pi by six, which is square root of three by two. And over here, it's gonna be a omega squared into sine pi by six, which is one by two. So this ratio. Wait, uh, we want this to be equal, right? We want the numerical value to be equal. So cancel, cancel. Just get omega equal to square root three. Nice. So the frequency. Wait, what? So we want the numerical value to be the same. This is gonna be a omega. Uh, omega is more like a unitless quantity. So, where are these all, all of these two pi coming from? Oh, in second inverse. So this would be basically you mean like not in radians per second, but in more like cycle per second. So in hertz. So this would be radians per second, which is square root three by two pi. Into two pi radians per second, which is one cycle per second. So that would be these many hertz. Cool. Okay, that's nice. Squared three upon two pi. Next. Well, yeah, that looks correct. Uh, find the ratio of the time periods of two identical springs if they are first joined in series and then in parallel, and a mass m is suspended from them. Wow. So ratio of time periods of two identical springs. They are identical. Well, that's nice. If they are first joined in series. And then in parallel. Okay, so if they are joined in series, then um, for some particular x, yeah, their strain is reduced to half, which means their stress is also reduced to half. So force is reduced to half, which means you need two times more x to to the same f, correct? So our f upon kicks, yeah, it's gonna become half. Stiffness is half now. So k series. Equals to half k, and k parallel equals two k because now there's two times the force pushing it, which means well it's like omega squared 
series one omega square parallel is all this so we need to find ratio of time periods first joint in series and then in parallel well okay fine whatever just divide this to get the numerical value so like omega parallel upon omega series is 2 easy as that that should be a thing next question okay in an elevator a spring clock of time period ts mass attached to the spring okay and a pendulum clock of time period tp are kept uh, spring clock what 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 what's a spring clock by the way huh mass attached to a spring oh so that's a spring clock that's kind of weird concept and a pendulum clock time period tp are kept if the elevator accelerates upward okay okay fine so what's the orientation of this mass attached to spring thing is it like ah that's weird i guess it should be like vertical most likely yep so what can we say in that case uh so the equilibrium position will be shifted but nothing really happens to the um yeah so nothing really happens to the net force experience and stuff but for the pendulum well it changes yeah for the for the pendulum it's gonna change for the springs spring thing only the equilibrium position change. so ts remains the same but tp decreases well at, uh, g is increasing is inversely proportional to square root of g so it's gonna decrease well yeah tp decreases cool a man is swinging on a swing made of two ropes of equal length and in direction perpendicular to the plane of paper the time period of a small oscillation about the main position is so it's swinging like yeah going to and fro from the paper so a side view of this would be like this it's two ropes the effective length over here well that would be this angle is what this angle is 60 degrees so l sine 60 degrees right well yeah it's gonna be l square root 3 by 2 that's the effective length okay so this complete thing is just l square root of 3 by 2 this part is massless so it doesn't account for any inertia and oh so it, it's more like just a simple pendulum so it's not a compound pendulum at all because this does not account for any inertia and it's just some guy, some guy hanging over here and it is swinging so yeah it is gonna be 2 pi square root of l uh, l square root 3 upon 2 upon g so that was easy so 2 pi square root of l square root 3 upon 2 g that looks correct where is the option nice so 16th done vertical displacement of a plank with a body of mass m on it in fact i think we need to stop for some time so i will do this later see you later